relativity theory is basically constructed on a modern type of geometry. Einstein used uh, one type of geometry called uh, Riemann geometry, um, but that was not the complete story. Uh, the variation on relativity known as ECE theory uses an improved uh, form of geometry that includes the spinning of space-time. The name of this new theory is the einstein cartan evans theory, or ECE. Einstein's was the imaginative mind that brought general relativity into being about a hundred years ago. Cartan worked out a powerful geometry for relativity, upon which Evans, in 2003, proposed his unified theory of physics. Well, Einstein, as a physicist, he had great intuition. And when he was in college in ETH University in Zurich, he was good at maths, but he didn't really apply himself that much. He took some of the easier le- courses in mathematics, and his mathematics lecturer could have taught him the hard courses or the easy courses, and he actually called Einstein a lazy dog, saying, we know you're capable of better. But he made his breakthroughs by his intuition, but later on, when he was going into general relativity, he realized he needed to really develop mathematics. Yeah, when Einstein first came across uh, uh, Riemann geometry, he said it was horrible, <laughs> and I couldn't understand it. And uh, th- those remarks were made to his friend Grossman, um, the mathematician Marcel Grossman, who was a student with him at ETH in Zurich, um, because it looks uh, so complicated. And uh, the Christoffel symbols, you know, are sometimes known as the Christoffel <laughs> symbols. <laughs> He became famous after special relativity, and he got a job in the sister university, ETH University, Zurich University, and by then, a friend in his class who was a great mathematician, he started teaching Einstein the maths they should have learned at college. Uh, But that was based on Riemann mathematics of curved surfaces. When Einstein wanted to move towards the theory of everything, he wanted to include this torsion of spinning space-time because he was in correspondence regularly with Eli Carton. But what happened was, at the time, they couldn't quite link them together. And the reason they couldn't link them together, there was a bit of the puzzle missing. Uh, Carton corresponded with Einstein quite a lot. Einstein himself tried to unif- unify the, the four fields in fact, at that time, two were known to him, just gravitation and electromagnetism. He worked on the problem until um, he died at Princeton in 1954, but did not get the solution. The solution, in fact, um, arrived through a new fundamental uh, field of electromagnetism called the B3 field, which I devised at Cornell. The bit of the puzzle missing was found from something called the inverse Faraday effect in 1992 when Myron Evans realized in the direction a photon is moving as a magnetic field in that direction, which was previous in loan. And with that missing bit of the jigsaw, Carton geometry was able to be applied to the curvature of space from gravity and docked. And that meant, for, for the first time, torsion could start to play its role in the geometry of gravity and forces across the universe. The birth of the Grand Unification can be traced back to November 1991, when Myron Evans, working at Cornell Theoretical Center on the inverse Faraday effect, was to make the breakthrough when he finally realized that the B3 field was a part of the spin connection resonance term in the ECE equation, and therefore critically important for the unification of electrodynamics and gravitation. Then, by 1996, the B3 field was realized to be a fundamental property of all aspects of electromagnetism and phase theory. 
Einstein and Cartan corresponded profusely on the role of torsion in general relativity, but neither was aware of the inverse Faraday effect in which the B3 field is observed. Today, the spin connection resonance phenomenon in electrodynamics is shown experimentally to be of key importance in many new industrial processes. So, before the development of VCE theory, electromagnetism used flat space-time, gravitation used uh, curved space-time. In 2003, I uh, used Carton's geometry of uh, 1922 to unify gravitation and electromagnetism by using a geometry that involved spinning as well as curving. So a charged particle will both curve and spin space-time. That gives then a unified picture of the charged particle in terms of geometry. Motion is essentially the spinning of space-time. It can be thought of as the spinning motion of a whirlpool. That's a very uh, evocative uh, metaphor for torsion and uh, some of the uh, greatest philosophers such as Leonardo and Descartes have uh, thought of the universe as being made up of uh, whirlpools. In its essence, uh, torsion is uh, therefore the kind of spin that you see in uh, a pool of water if you uh, put a spoon in a cup of coffee and stir it, then the water moves in a torsion, and instead of water, you think of space-time. Every equation of physics was found from geometry, using only one basic idea or hypothesis. The different fundamental force fields of nature were found to originate in a common source, from which great rivers of nature flow. Electromagnetism, the spinning of space-time, was unified with gravitation, the curving of space-time. Well, according to Hubble, uh, galaxies and stars move away from uh, the observer on the Earth at an increasing rate because the red shift of light from these objects uh, increases in proportion to the distance they are away from the Earth. So this uh, model by Hubble was accepted uncritically and uh, led to the uh, belief that the universe started at uh, singularity. Uh, this is called Big Bang. It's not clear that the frequency of light will remain absolutely the same as the light traverses uh, the enormous distances of uh, intergalactic space and deep space. It could be that matter exists uh, in these uh, regions and that matter would lead to the absorption of light, and that would re, uh, lead to a red shift. So the red shift uh, is caused by simple absorption, according to the Beer-Lambert law, and uh, not due to the recession of uh, matter from the Earth. <laughs> The whole of cosmology proceeded on the assumption that there is no torsion. If um, one reinstates the torsion, it can be shown clearly by use of something called the dual identity that the Einstein equation is self-inconsistent, so nothing can be dedu deduced from it because the mathematics are incorrect. Last year or two, ECE theory was applied to the problem of dark matter, and with a simple computer program, the field could be seen to be synonymous with the spiral arms. So you just take a photograph of a galaxy, say M51, the Whirlpool galaxy, work out where the torsion would be, superimpose it, and the superimposing effect is that the force field lines of torsion are exactly over the spiral arms. Quite simply, the spiral shape of galaxies emanates from the torsion. It's uh, intuitively clear, you know, mm -hmm. that something that is like a whirlpool will uh, produce a spiral uh, evolution. And it can be shown mathematically the galaxy is, is in fact a spiral, a logarithmic spiral, mm -hmm. you know, the equation of the spiral in mathematics.
With EC theory, it's become quite obvious. At the center of the galaxy, we have gravity as the dominant force. As you move further out, the torsion of spinning space-time takes over. And as you get further out, the pattern of the spiral arms is controlled by torsion. And if you look at the spiral arms, you can see the, 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 the torsion in them. And what you see throughout the galaxy, there are strands going right through, linking all the superclusters. And when you realize what it is, it's just torsion. It's not gravity controlling uh, distance at the vastness of space. Gravity cuts off sooner, and it's the torsion of spinning space-time dominates on the grand scale of the universe. Since 2003, it's been realized that all physics can be described by geometry. The subjects of relativity and quantum mechanics were unified, and the absurd ideas of indeterminacy rejected. The idea that something is inherently unknowable was discarded in favor of the older physics, that an event has a cause, and the way in which things work can be figured out by the human mind. The Heisenberg uh, uncertainty principle has actually been called the indeterminacy principle and was rejected outright by Einstein because in that world of indeterminacy, Things uh, move backwards in time. Things can happen without a cause. Atoms cannot be seen. And uh, in general, it is uh, a fantasy world. So the Heisenberg uh, uncertainty principle cannot be part of a causal and unified field theory, the type that Einstein had in mind and the type that the einstein carton evans uh, theory puts into final form. So uh, ECE theory has the great advantage of being to, able to reconcile the uh, difference between the classical idea of vacuum as being a nothingness due to Einstein uh, in his theory of relativity and the quantum idea of a vacuum as being the uh, Dirac C it, uh, the, the vacuum in that idea consists of uh, particles which uh, inherently have a great energy. But uh, in EC theory, the two concepts are unified by looking uh, at the subject in, in a new way and constructing the electromagnetic potential. <laughs> EC theory describes the universe in essentially the same way from the uh, macroscopic world of uh, supergalactic clusters to the uh, smallest microscopic world of quarks. Quarks are regions of uh, spinning spacetime. Galaxies are also regions of spinning spacetime. And this gives an appealing view of the whole universe. Standard physics is only one school of thought. Uh, there are other less well-known schools of thought uh, which perhaps have not um, put themselves across to the general public in as forceful a manner as the standard school. An example of this is the debate between uh, Professor Sir Fred Hoyle on the one hand, Professor Sir Roger Penrose and Professor Stephen Hawking on the other. It seems that uh, Penrose and Hawking have um, won the day, so as to say, uh, but uh, uh, theories are always measured against nature. Nature. <laughs> 